the apology has an has an interesting reception, and um, it's a it's a relatively short text, and so perhaps for that reason and also for other reasons, uh, was was quite widely circulated and and read. In the nineteenth century, interestingly, Socrates is seen as a kind of Christ-like figure. He's assimilated to Jesus Christ. He's presented as a martyr, as someone who is ready to go to the death for what he believes in. And there are these fascinating parallels that are drawn between the figure of Jesus Christ and Socrates. What's, what's interesting too is that someone like Gandhi, for instance, for instance when he's in South Africa in the late 19th century, early 20th century, reads the Apology and translates it into Gujarati initially and um, disseminates it to his readers there in, in South Africa among the Indian community. Uh, and then he later on also translates it into English. And he he prefaces this translation with some remarks of his own. He encourages, Gandhi encourages his readers to, to look up to the example of Socrates. And, uh, and he, again, in this 19th century tradition, uh, talks of Socrates as a martyr, as someone who's prepared to die for what he believes in. Gandhi says that Indians ought to be ready to make the ultimate sacrifice too, just as Socrates was, and that Indian civilization has decayed because because of Indians themselves, not just because of the British, but because of Indians themselves. And he says we need more men like Socrates to help us. Now, in an interesting twist, Gandhi's translation of Plato's Apology in Gujarati is actually banned by the British colonial authorities in India. And so it circulates in India as a text of civil disobedience. And this is, a, this is we might think, a deeply ironic development. It's ironic because hundreds of thousands of, of schoolboys in England were reading Plato's Apology. Presumably some of the civil servants, the judges in India, who were ruling India, had themselves read the, the Apology. So what was, what was so inflammatory wasn't the fact that it was the apology that was being translated, but that was being translated by this particular person and that it potentially had seditious uses. That it was potentially a seditious text. And so, uh, for that reason, the apology, Gandhi's translation of the apology, along with some of his other texts, were banned by the British. The ban was eventually lifted. Uh, and of course the Apology was freely available at the same time in an English translation in Greek and in other languages. So it was a slightly silly move on the part of the colonial authorities to ban, ban the Apology.